Oh. <laughs> That's crazy. Now watch number one be Ice. Ice. <laughs> 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 and wrote by Bob Dylan. <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. Prince and Bob Dylan, Dylan collaborated to write Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. Hey, dash though. I can talk my ass off. Hey, smoke you what you seen, and I'll tell you what I saw. Hollywood, what you think, and I'll tell you what I thought. And we can talk about it all when we hear on trash talk. What's going on, everybody? We're back with another segment of the Trash Talkers Podcast. We made it. We made it. Yeah, we did. What's going on, Smoke Diggity Diggity oh, Dog? Man, crazy week. Crazy week. You know what? I, I've been. I've always wanted to scam the scammers. So lately. You get those Lord. messages on social media from the people like, um, send me five dollars or send me 50, yeah. I'll send you 500 back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I've been thinking, like, I've been humoring those people a lot. I want to do like the full on scam the scammers thing. I don't know. Uh, I'm not that good with computers to be able to pull it off like some of the, the best people do on YouTube or whatever. Okay, but I do humor them. Like, uh, what's the one? Oh, where they'll they'll be like, send me your cash app tag right now for blessings. I will send you seventy five dollars or whatever. So I, I'm like, all right, there's my cash app tag. You give them your cash app? Yeah. That's no. Well, anybody can get it. Like that's not secret information. Okay, good. And they can't get anything from you just by giving them the tag. Okay. But they will uh, say, okay, well here's what my company does. We work in gift cards, so I need you to go and get like this amount of gift cards. I'm like, bro, I ain't doing that. Like, that's how they want to get you. You live in life on the wild side. Yeah, but I want to see if one of them will be like, okay, well, here's your 75 bucks. Now I need you to get me the the cards, and I'm like, mm, see ya. I'll just take the 75 and leave. <laughs> yeah. Those flipping scams, though, that's how they do. They will send you money back. They'll yeah. be like, send me 10 bucks, I'll send you 100. So you send them ten bucks and they send you a hundred. Then they're like, "Okay, see how easy that was. Now send me five hundred and I'll send you no, a thousand just keep or whatever." Y'all yeah. be aware of scams and stay away Absolutely, from them. Absolutely, yeah. What'd you do this week? Man, mine, dude. I, I guess mine. I, first of all, I'm not messing with nobody's money. That leave that alone. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not in your realm at all. But there was a hot dog eating contest in Atlanta. And you know, so I, I I tried to audition for it, and or not audition, but you go out there and you you know you see if you fit the, you know you fill out your name, your date of birth, your age, your weight, you know, or do you have blood pressure, diabetic, diabetes, or anything like that. And I'm looking around, and there's like you know three Asian dudes, you know two African dudes, and these dudes are tiny. I'm oh, yeah, six are. foot two, six foot three, sitting there like. I'm easily going to eat these dudes out. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen that way. Bro, I saw a dude practicing. Yeah. Practicing. He was practicing before the – and he's just <laughs> – I'm like, no, nah, I can't do it. There's no way. There's no – I mean, he's just oh, – oh, 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 like – and, I mean, tiny dude, bro. You ever watch, like, the Nathan's Hot Dog Contest on the 4th of July? Mm -mm. I've watched it, like, several years in a row now. It's, Who's the world champion, Smokey? Joey Chestnut. Bro, you did not just name the <laughs> world champion of hot dog eating. Is yeah. that? Are you serious? Yeah, he's won like. I thought it was a Asian sixteen guy. or fifteen or the past sixteen. No, that was um. If you, oh god, what was his name? How do you know Kobayashi. this? Kobayashi. Kobayashi was the champ for a long time, but he imagine didn't wanna, being friends with this guy. See, it got took over by the World Series. Uh, what is it? World uh, Series of hot eating? of eating. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um. But he didn't want to like sign up for the the entire league or whatever, so he bowed out. And Joey Chestnut's been winning every year, except for like twenty fifteen. Joey Chestnut's American. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt Stoney won one year. I guess Joey was off his game or whatever. What do you think? What What is it with the smaller, skinnier stature that makes them? I don't know. There is a big dude that's always competing, but he doesn't get close to winning. Huh? Like Joey Chestnut, dude. In ten minutes, he'll eat like seventy something hot dogs. Bro, give me it, one, two. I'm I'm ready to take a nap. <laughs> exactly. I'm ready. I know. I'm literally seeing this dude practice. He's like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, you're practicing? Like we didn't even uh, start. And I'm like, nah, the same for me. Yeah, the same for me, dude. <laughs> nah, but well, I think the key is too is they don't eat all that 
like year round, they'll just like chug gallons of water to stretch their ah. stomachs out. That's why they don't get super fat, and then, of course they gotta have a good metabolism anyway. Yeah, well, most but, most yeah. of the winners are you know very skinny, petite, yeah. so their metabolism probably is very high. You know? Yeah, exactly. And they'll regurgitate also after eating. Dude, all you that. think they throw up like after? They have to. I mean, what's his, what was his name? Which one, Joey Chestnut? How, first of all, how do you know that? Um, just from watching it <laughs> I don't know I'm fascinated by people who can do crazy feats like that alright yeah okay let's read the top po- uh, comments from last podcast and this uh, this was from the previous podcast with the top five um, top five music performances of all time mm-hmm. the number three most liked comment comes from Ken is it Bober or Bobber uh, Bober. Ken Bober. Yeah. Yes, Ken Bober. He says, I grew up in Tampa, so I know all about the heat and humidity. Back in 2017, I had to transfer in or I had to transfer in Orlando before my flight to New Mexico. Stepped outside for a smoke, and by the time I finished a cig, I was drenched mm. in sweat. As a kid, I was used to it. Now I'm a, a acclim, acc- acclimated. No, with the say this word. Accl- acclimate. Acc- Acclimatized. Acclimatized, <laughs> yes. Acclimatized to a New England weather. I was suffering. I have a photo of my dash one day here where it said 118, 15 degrees. <laughs> I know it was a reflection on the dirt, uh, but it was still like a sauna that day. You uh, you felt like you were drowning with the humidity. Dude, wow. I, I don't know because I've lived here my whole life. I mean, I've been around the country, but I've lived here my whole life. I swear it gets harder when you get older. Yes, dude. I saw a, uh, like a YouTuber Instagram short where it was like it showed like a part. I can't remember what 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 state it was, but it was like everything was in the hundred, hundred and five, hundred and seven, yeah. and it was one. He said everyone in this place is dead. It was like a hundred and ten, <laughs> one hundred and ten thousand degrees. <laughs> like they made a typo. Oh, it was a misprint. Yeah, yeah, they made a typo. He's like, just so you know, everyone here is dead. It's one hundred and ten thousand degrees. <laughs> That was hilarious. Probably felt like it, though. I bet it did. That's what it feels like here, dude. Yeah. Uh, the number two most liked comment from that podcast uh, is from Marquise Lexel. He says, Stevie Ray Vaughan live at El Macambo will always be number one oh, with the horns up. Yeah. The number one most liked comment from that podcast is from Metal Guru 85. Shout out, Metal Guru true trash talker Mm -hmm. says only a few seconds in and queen at live aid has to be number one on this list which it was yeah it was absolutely and we talked a lot about it in that podcast but that was a phenomenal performance yes Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) you just went silent i'm like what's what's the next segment (laughs) you went quiet too my bad no i mean Look, Queen, I, I, like, dang, why I always got to lead it? You lead it today. Go ahead. You lead it. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I thought we were going into the main segment. Absolutely. Let's do yeah. it. Today's, today's topic is the top five songs. Or, 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 help me out. Covers that were better than the original songs. The top five cover songs that were better than the original. Yeah, this one comes from Yardbreaker, Yardbarker.com. Now listen, bro. You know how good you have to be in order to do it better than the original. Mm-hmm. Like, they, I, for some reason in my head, Purple Rain by Prince is sticking out. And it's like, there's you can't, there, you can't do that better. People have tried to cover it, but yeah, no one's done it better than Prince. I think there's probably different elements that they're putting into this also. Not just because they thought well this one sounded better but it's also sales and Uh, popularity of the song also you know not only that but i was thinking of the prince situation i'm like okay prince were uh, wrote and actually recorded nothing compares to you Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. however i actually enjoy sinead o'connor's yeah. version better well chris cornell chris cornell me. yeah yeah absolutely but if i had to rank them and i might have done that in the in that reaction we did to chris cornell but sinead i think is just better maybe because of nostalgic feelings oh, yeah but number two i would have to say prince and number three would be chris chris 
But it's crazy that I'm putting the singer song or the songwriter singer in in the person who actually the idea it came from. I'm putting Sinead over mm. Prince. Like you mm. can't imagine putting anyone over the original. Yeah, especially if it's Prince. But then again, that that song killed, man, and probably number one, I would imagine. I'd I would, have to go back and look at the charts at that time. I mean, dude, you know how hard it is to beat someone who literally walks on stage with his butt cheeks out? <laughs> Serve you, or ask you, Charlie Murphy, and your friends to play basketball and beat you <laughs> in basketball with the same clothes, not basketball attire at all. And then after he beats you, serves you pancakes hey speaking of that though there's a ton of artists actually on the entire list we're only doing the top five mm -hmm. there's actually 25 completely want to give me an over under on how many prints might have written <laughs> Shit. i'm gonna say prince probably wrote more than half of this hey, you think how, that many? what is it 25 on this yeah list? out of 25 <laughs> the top I'll, covers of all time i mean prince wrote I, 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 I bet at I'm least say, five or six. Yeah, I'm gonna say at least five or six, yeah. at least, dude. Yeah, so start definitely. starting out at number five, and this is again, I don't know why my bro, I'm getting the dyslexia. The title of top five songs that were or covers that were better than the original. Okay, now number five on this list of the cover that was better than the original is "I Will Always Love You" by Whitney Houston. First mm. of all, I had no idea this was a cover. Yeah, yeah, this is Dolly Parton. Oh, crap. Mm-hmm. And I, <laughs> I yeah. will always... I ain't, I ain't trying to hit that <laughs> note. Nope. <laughs> I, I will say, tell you a funny story about this song, though. What you got? Is I didn't realize it either, but I happened to... It was like on HBO one night. There was this crazy musical on called... <laughs> oh, you're going to do that in just a second. The title of this movie, oh, it was go. a musical called The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's apropos for that. What the hell, dude? The Best yeah. Little Whorehouse. The Best Little Whorehouse. It had like Burt Reynolds in it and a ton of other famous people from that time period. This is like from the 70s, I believe. And Wait, is this an Dolly actual... Parton was one of the actresses. She was this. at the best... She was yeah she she actually ran the best little whorehouse. So in Texas. she was the uh, she the was maid, the, ma yeah, ma uh, the madam. Yeah, yeah, she was. To all our Texans out there, let us know where the best yeah. whorehouse in Texas. Is. I had known of the Whitney Houston. I bet cover. you have. Oh, I'm, oh, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. I thought, go ahead. <laughs> I had known that. What was that from the Bodyguard? I believe. I think so. Yeah. So I, I knew about that song, but I saw this and she was singing it. So I was like. Wow, well, this was long before the bodyguard. Yeah. So I looked it up, and apparently she was the original artist. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a quick synopsis here. It says Dolly Parton earned country success with her original recording from the first half of the 1970s, and there's no denying how special that version is to many. It says, however, Houston's cover for 1992's, like you said, the bodyguard, mm -hmm. which she starred in as her film debut, was a mainstream juggernaut. In addition to being an example of pop perfection, it introduced a new generation of fans to uh, Parton's music. Houston's versions won a Grammy. Mm. God, a, co a cover won a Grammy. Yeah. Okay, let me let me just repeat this sentence. Houston's version won a Grammy for the record of the year and best pop vocal performance, female, and six mute Billboard Music Jesus. Awards. Does that make Dolly Parton like f you? Uh, well, I bet she got paid. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, oh, did she originally that? write it, though, was the question. Prince probably wrote that. <laughs> Prince probably Prince. <laughs> Prince yeah. is like, ooh, I yeah. can't wait to get my... I hope both of y'all win <laughs> Grammys. Ooh, he's over there like, ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, that. that's the thing with the music industry, though. The face doesn't necessarily make all the money. It's the... Yeah. Like that's that's if you ask me that's entertainment. Mm -hmm. The people who make the most money are behind the camera. Yeah, the writers. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. Absolutely. Who you got at number four, Smoke? Uh, number four. This is Joe Cocker with a little help from my friends. We actually covered I this did, song. Get a little help from. Yeah, my, I get by with, with a little, little help, help from, from my friends. friends. Yeah. I thought he said I get high. I think it's, I get by right. That's a Mandela effect for me because I thought he said I get high with a little now help. I want to go back and listen to the song. Again. I swear I thought it was, was always by. I remember high. Of course, it could be one of those where they change it for the radio, also possibly. 
All right, Joe Cocker's soulful take on the Beatles with a little help from wow. our friends essentially made the raspy voiced Howler a household name. It was the title of his debut album, and Cocker's version of the song was number one single in the United Kingdom, though he would go on to earn cons- consistent success. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fighting dyslexia. I go ahead. Here. I, I, you're good. Take your time, buddy. Uh, this cover still remains the defining moment on Cocker's musical legacy. And who can forget his afternoon performance of the tune at Woodstock? Oh, man. Trash Talkers, let me know in the comment, but didn't Joe Cocker sing the intro to The Wonder Years? I think we talked about that. Yes. We I, talked about that in the video when we did this song, I believe. Yeah. Cause you were you were like, isn't this the guy that sings the theme song? Wait, we've we're, we've done this song? Yeah, we did this song. Hmm. Yeah, matter of fact, I think the picture <laughs> they have right here is from the video we did. Oh, I think you're right. Damn, yeah. 1968. Wow, that's crazy. Of course. And you said the 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 one we did was later in his life though. But was oh, I do remember doing that actually. Yeah. And but now, so if. He released that song in 68. Mm-hmm. When did the Beatles release it? You would think. I mean, that's the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, you would think not long before that. So that just means Paul McCartney's like, ooh, man. <laughs> <laughs> just like, <laughs> He's still making money. Dude, because Michael Jackson never got the Beatles catalog, right? Didn't, didn't uh, he, he Paul... got? I think he got it, and then he died recently after. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think he got it, and then he died. So like that was, I, I remember he was fighting with Paul McCartney over it, right? I, I, if I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, which my memory memory is absolute garbage, <laughs> but I think Mike Michael, I was about he to say Mike Tyson, Mike, yeah. J- Michael Jackson did get it, and then died pre, uh, like a few months after. Rest in peace. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So number three on this list. Holy crap. What you got? Nothing compares to you. Oh, of course. By Sinead O'Connor, dude. <laughs> of again, course. Again, it has dude, to be on here. A, a, again, Prince is back there. <laughs> <laughs> Just make that money for me, honey. Yeah. Uh, O'Connor became a household name on the mainstream pop scene with her performance of this Prince-pinned heartbreak ballad about a, j- a jilted lover unsuccessfully trying to move on from being dumped. Wow. The point, I can never say this word. Go ahead and say that word for me. Point, I can't say it. My mouth doesn't work that way. <laughs> Poign- poignantly. Yeah. I know the G is silent. Po- poignantly. Poignantly. Yeah. The poignantly powerful music video where the crew cut it, O'Connor shed some tears. Damn, did she cry in that video? Yes, she did. Yeah. You've never seen that video? I have seen the video. I don't remember her crying. Yeah, she's though. got a little tear rolling down. Dude, I've cried to that song. <laughs> I have, but it says it only added to the song's emotional impact. Prince wrote the song for a side project known as The Family, and it can be found on the group's first project from 1985. Yet, Nothing Compares to You will always be associated with O'Connor yeah. and remains the high point of her career. For those who can't get enough of the tune in general, experiences experience Chris Cornell's brilliant. Well, there you go. We just summed all that up before we read it. Before we even read it. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's crazy. What are the chances (laughs) that was number three, dude? And we didn't even know that. We might have even thought it would have been number one, though, because that's the first thing that comes to mind when you're like, oh, a cover that was bigger than the original. You haven't looked at number one yet, have you? No. All right, let's take a guess. I haven't even looked at number two yet. Or Uh, or number two, yeah. yeah. What would be number one, then? Let's think of it. Because I would say Sinead O'Connor would have been one. That was my first thought. Let's think number one. I bet it's like a Bob Dylan song or something. Why do I feel like it's a Vanilla Ice or a Kid Rock or a Baby Got? I don't. Why do I feel like it's hip hop covers though? You don't. I didn't know freaking and uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know uh, Dolly Parton and Prince. Or, ooh. <laughs> what, what what about um? What was the boy band? The R and B boy band? No, that that kept covering Back that country. Boys. No, it was a it was one of the black uh, boy bands uh, in uh, New Edition. No, uh, uh, was it Boys to Men? One of them kept covering. Oh, there was a country artist who kept putting out songs, and then the boy band would keep covering their songs. It did like two or three of their songs, or the the country artist songs. Really? Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. Was it Boys to Men? You remember the freaking hot dog winner Dude. champion? Okay. <laughs> but you you're can't. into what you're into. I don't know, man. <laughs> man, what you got for number two, bro? Let's see. What is number 
Oh, well, speaking of that, it happens to be All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Wait, Le- didn't Led Zeppelin Am I, first? Are we manifesting these? Wait, we didn't say Jimi <laughs> Hendrix, though, but didn't Led no. Zeppelin do All Along the Watchtower? No, it was Bob Dylan. I just mentioned Bob Dylan. <laughs> I'm telling you, Y'all, we're manifesting this I list. I swear, we do not look at these <laughs> lists before. I swear we don't. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> That's crazy. Now watch number one be Ice. Ice. <laughs> 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 and wrote by Bob Dylan. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Prince and Bob Dylan, Dylan. collaborated to write Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> That's amazing, dude. <laughs> it says, Professional music critics and diehard Bob Dylan fans often regard Hendrix's version of this rock classic wow. as arguably the best cover any of any track in the Folks Legends. Listen, vast legacy and catalog. Jimmy did kill it, though. He did. He did. Absolutely. Uh, even within Hendrix's stable of memorable and beloved tunes. He had a tunes. stable? Huh? <laughs> Apparently he did. <laughs> His take on All Along the Watchtower is widely regarded as some of the best work. Uh, perhaps because Hendrix was quite enamored with Dylan. I actually mentioned that in the video. Wait, you said Prince was... No, I said Hendrix. Oh, I thought you said Prince was. That's what it sounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you heard, but anyway. uh, Hendrix was quite enamored with Dylan's music and delved into his brilliance. Uh, found on 1968's Electric Ladyland and released six months after Dylan put his original out. Wow, that was right after. Right basically. after six months. Damn, yeah. man. I mean, if y'all haven't seen our reaction to to um, All Along the Watch. The, damn, I almost sounded English. All along the Watchtower. <laughs> Watchtower. But yeah, if y'all haven't seen All Along the Watchtower, but, uh, our reaction to that by yeah. Jimi Hendrix, go check it out because he absolutely did his thing on yeah, that dude. Yeah, absolutely. We did it there in Blues Week. Yes, we did. Yeah. It's crazy that we're manifesting this. <laughs> I know. We're about to get to number one. We have no clue what it is. <laughs> it's going to watch it be <laughs> Sir Mix a lot. Baby Got Back, wrote by. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the credits will probably go to go to Suge Knight. <laughs> Suge Knight took credit for everything. <laughs> yeah, I did that. I'm gonna need those. I'm gonna need those royalties, bro. All right, let's see. Number one on this list for the cover. This help me with that. <laughs> Covers that were, were better, better than the original. original. Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Who is it? R E S P C T by Aretha Franklin. That's what, was she wasn't the original, bro. Come on, a lot of these I'm like, there's no, no, excuse me, there's no way there's these are covers. So yeah, I had no idea. Respect by Aretha Franklin. Who was take the a guess who wrote it? Otis Redding. <laughs> yes, you're right. Oh really? I swear to God, you're right. <laughs> I swear, I swear, I just <laughs> guessed that. Who <laughs> is? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Dude, you are cow. We are manifest. You cow. You saw that. I swear. We just covered Otis Redding. <laughs> that was the first Dude, thing that popped in my head. It says while Otis Redding enjoyed this, uh, uh, enjoys. <laughs> you calf as hell. Bro. I Wh- swear I didn't. All right. While Otis Redding enjoyed success with this song, wow, that he wrote and first recorded in 1965. So she released it two years later. It was Franklin who wrote. Uh, res- Damn, now in my head, I just can't see Otis <laughs> Redding saying, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, tell me what you mean to me. Second time, second time. <laughs> I can't either. I can't see it. It was Franklin who made a respect and anthem, not just for herself. Um, wait, not just for herself, but women everywhere. When she sold it up and reworked versions two years later, when comparing the two, there are notice there are noticeable differences. I bet. I bet. Though both are up tempo, each is told from different gender points of view. Yeah, okay. Obviously. However, Franklin Franklin's is empowering with her background singers adding to the bombast and overall mm-hmm. vocal aggressiveness that made men and women absolutely listen to what the Queen of Soul was preaching. It was a defining moment, not just for Franklin. But the pop music world that still resonates today. Mm. Wasn't there like um, an alternative band in the '90s that remade that song, also? 
I have no. I think they had a hit with it too. I, I'm at this point. I'll just stop doubting your memory if you can know the, the freaking <laughs> hot dog eating championship. For two Dude, years. I swear, I just came up with that one right off the. I That's think we're crazy. manifesting it. That's crazy. Dude, before we move on, I really want to just look at the rest of this list really quick, see if there's any noticeable ones. Prince is just like, oh, I can't wait. Rest in peace to the. List. Oh, there's a good one at number nine, "Killing Me Softly" by the Fugees. Who they? Th- oh, I actually knew that. They took that from a. Uh, well, um, Killing me no, um, I heard Frank Sinatra do it, but this one actually said it was a team of songwriters. Who? Oh, who you got? Uh, Killing me damn it, know. was it Bob Marley actually? Killing me softly. Uh, no, it just says a team of songwriters, huh. but I remember Frank Sinatra doing that song. Uh, anyway trash takers let us know yeah girls just want to have fun I didn't know that was a cover no and guys y'all can go check this out give give, give, this, yeah. give the website credit who's the yeah it's yardbarker.com cover songs that are better than the original and that's the top 25 we just did yeah. the top 5 oh knocking on heaven's door that's another um, Bob Not, Dylan song of course Bob Bob what? Dylan and Prince wrote all these songs. I'm just convinced. Dude, I can, you can't. You're not going <laughs> to convince me you didn't see number one and say, oh, this No, I absolutely did not. I swear. I swear I had no That's idea crazy. who wrote that song. <laughs> I mean, you talking about manifesting things and literally come out of every. We didn't talk about Prince. We didn't yeah. talk about Bob Dylan. We didn't talk about Suge Knight. Yeah. And out of nowhere. You come with Otis, Otis Redding. We just covered him, though. We, we did sitting on the Bach of the Day. Bach of the Day. <laughs> sitting on the Bach of the Day. That's, what, that's like late night. <laughs> the Bach of the Day. God <laughs> dang, dude. <laughs> I just be chilling. Bach of the Day. <laughs> sitting on the Bach of the Day. Hey, Proud Mary by Ike and Tina is on here. Eat the cake in a minute. That was Creedence Clearwater. That's um, crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting. Oh, Rucky, Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash. Yeah, you guys can I check out the rest. Yeah, <laughs> please go on. The, please do. What we got for OMG? Do, do we have uh, an OMG? WTF yeah, we do. Today? Oh, we got yeah, we both. Do. We OM- do. Uh, well, not not an OMG. Let's see what we have today. Let me pull them. Do up we have here. a WTF? Uh, well, we have um, Berlin, Germany. So right. we could do. Oh, OMG. We could do. Oh, oh my Germany. Oh my Germany. Yes. What's the other place? WTF. So what, the Florida? Yep. All right, crank it up. Let's see. And All right. <clears throat> give them how it goes. Escaped a lion Well, you got to is... tell them. How. Oh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to read two Your headlines. Your not working today. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you read them as a matter of fact. Okay. But uh, I'm going to read the headlines. Wait a minute. I'm obviously going to know then. <laughs> no, I'm going to read the headlines, and you're going to guess, and then you can read the stories. Okay. Uh, escaped lion on the loose. That's urgent, Florida. There's no question. Urgent <laughs> citywide search, police say. And what's the other one? The other one is man throws barbecue grill at deputies. Damn, that strikes car <laughs> with, <laughs> with a tire iron in road rage fit. What? He's over there barbecuing his ribs. The cops pull up. Some Karen and probably call the guy. He just picks up the whole grill and meat and all just throws them at him. Oh, so all right. I'm gonna say. Escape lion or throwing a barbecue grill? Bar? Do they barbecue like that in Germany? Uh, I think that's worldwide, basically. Well, f- Glutenheimer isn't that a, a schnitzel or something? Isn't that Glutenheimer? A, what's Glutenheimer? I don't know. I don't know what a wiener schnitzel is. A wiener schnitzel. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. That's a grilled hot dog, right? Yeah, somewhat. As far as I know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go the because I know there are more lions. You said lion, right? Not tiger. Yeah, lion and uh, lion on the loose or throws a barbecue, barbecue. grill. So I'm going to say lion on the loose is Florida. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go with throwing the barbecue grill is German, <laughs> Germany. It sounds like something Alex would do. Yeah. <laughs> God, no, JJ, stop interrupting me. <laughs> Uh, you actually got them wrong. Ah. It's been quite some time since you got one wrong. Uh, but yeah. You so me, so right. here's what we do. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Uh, which one you want to read first? Uh, all right. So I, I got you. All, all right. right. But uh, these are the headlines. Okay. And for the barbecue grill goes that way. 
and for the escape okay, line goes gotcha. that way. Just Smokey's dyslexia is bad today, yeah. so I'm having to help him. So we're going to read about the um, the escape lion on the loose in Berlin. So yeah. it, the headline is escape lion on the loose in Berlin prompts urgent citywide search police say quote unquote stay indoors it says a suspected lion is loose in berlin prompting authorities in germany to send emergency alerts to thousands of people in berlin warning them to stay indoors the message has warned thousands of people across germany's capital city to stay indoors after a lion was last seen on the outskirts of the metropolitan area mm. i don't think that's too I mean, I heard it. normal? Yeah. I, I, actually, that happened here in Atlanta one time. Dude, it happened in Louisiana. I heard yeah. Theo Vaughn saying that there were, they, there were like monkeys that escaped from the zoo, and they, <laughs> the cops went and got teenagers to try to like rile the monkeys <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> I remember back during the, the pandemic. Oh, remember the cows got on the highway in Atlanta? Yeah. yeah. Well, there was one also where like uh, some a tiger got loose, I believe. Huh. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. But um, uh, Tiger got loose, and I remember, uh, I don't know if it was on I social media or a headline of an article that said um, diseases, uh, tigers, and storms or whatever. Who's playing uh, Jumanji? Damn. Some, <laughs> man, stop playing Jumanji, dude. <laughs> yeah. So the next one is Florida man throws barbecue grill at deputy, strikes cars with the, with tire iron in road, in road rage fit. So yeah. it says a Florida man is behind bars. Shout out to all our Floridians, but what the <laughs> hell is in the water down there, dude? A Florida man is behind bars after a road rage fit that included intentionally ramming into cars, striking them with the tire iron, and even throwing a barbecue at deputies, the Brevard C County Sheriff's uh, Office said Tuesday. The incidents occurred Tuesday morning in Cocoa, or Cacao, uh, near the intersection of School Street and Bay Avenue, officials said. I'm not going to say his name, but he is in custody and faces several charges, including resisting arrest, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer, and other related charges. You think? <laughs> you think? You think? <laughs> yeah. Who that? I mean, what kind of grill was it? Because you got the small little grill, like I, a little. I think it, yeah, one of those little uh, round ones. Bro, you know, what like if it was a, a whole circle? smoker and he's like a Brock? <laughs> he just. <laughs> Get off of me! Like, <laughs> like one of those giant charbroils. That's on a trailer on the back of the truck. It's like, Hulk smash! Yeah. Dude, man. Florida is out there, man. Man, they do some crazy stuff. What is it about Florida, man, dude? Why? We're literally one state away from it. Why well, don't... That's the question, though. Is it? Is it just because of the culmination of so many different types of people mm. that moved to Florida? We got that in Atlanta, too, though. Yeah, we do. That's the thing. Uh, does it happen everywhere? And just at some point, somebody started picking up on, hey, there's a bunch of crazy stories that ha happened in Florida this week. So they started making this segment called Florida Man Segment, you know, and then it just caught on. Like, oh, everybody's thinking, yeah, crazy people live in Florida. I will say, I mean, it's so crazy that literally trash talkers out there, Smokey can find a floor when when we're before we do the podcast, you know, he reach he researches, you know, he'll look through comments or yeah. emails if you guys have sent in stuff from where you're from, which guys please send over some stories so we can read them on camera. Yeah. But he has no problem finding a floor man story. No. But any other place on the world? Oh, it's tough. It does. It gets tough. Cause you can just search, um, just search crazy news headlines. Like you'll get something like a uh, governor did something, or oh, dude, you hear they or found, some animals or something. You, you know? hear they found white girl in the in the in the White House. You know what? That does sound familiar. They like found, I might have seen a, a headline found, or something, but I in uh, the White House. Yeah, <laughs> is Hunter Biden that really, <laughs> um, bro? What if like all right. If you find it, you get to do a little bit. Like, what if they play, like, fun tricks like I would have thought marijuana. No, this was yeah. that girl. Well, who you, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know I if feel, we should put a name on it. Well, we ain't gonna, let's not put a name on it, but I'm thinking they probably were like, all right, once a month, we're going to hide it. And if you find it, and some, some journalist probably found it. He's like, what is that? But every, uh, Biden and his, and his family and his administration, Kamala, they're running around. like, oh, I, it's my month. Woo! <laughs> Let's what go. if the White House has like a purge type deal, Which where mean? they just allow them to go crazy for a day or something? Yeah, that's what. That, I, what if this has been that that 
that substance being found in the White House has been going on for generations. Exactly, that's and, what I'm saying. Yeah, and one one freaking <laughs> they've been keeping it secret all these years. One uh, one person that works for Fox News just happened to find it. Dang yeah. it! And the cat's out of the bag. At that right. Point. I mean, go look at Clinton when he said, "I did not have said." He was a little. He found it that damn day. <laughs> <laughs> He found it that day, dude. I did but not. George Bush couldn't remember the, the, yeah, he's the re- joke. <laughs> he found it, bro. He found it that day. I mean, literally. I did. Bill's Clinton got the got white on his nose. I did not inhale. I did sniff the. <laughs> That's funny, man. That's... I don't do that stuff, but I do like the smell. Woo. <laughs> his mouth like. Uh, just going crazy. No, man, this was a fun one, dude. This yeah. was a good one. Trash Talkers, let us know if you guys have um, a song that you think someone that covered did it better than the original down in the comment section. Also, remember, if your uh, comment gets the most likes, the top three will be read on last po- or the next podcast. And if you got any crazy stories that come from where you're from, leave them down in the comment sections. We'll read them, and we will put them out on the mm-hmm. next podcast. You got anything else, bro? Yeah, or you can hit us up on social media or down in the um, description. There will yes, be a, an email. Uh, an email. Link. Email. Yeah. You can hit us up on Instagram or the email in the uh, description. Or yes, what's yes. he said. With that being said, my name is Bandra Hollywood Six. Bye. I am Larry Smokey Ramirez, Kelly. and we are over and out. Deuces. Deuces. Let's go find it. Come on. <laughs>